Hello, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell and an independent consultant working with the Microsoft Azure Public Cloud and PowerShell Automation. In this video, I would like to take a couple minutes to talk to you about how to use base constructors in PowerShell class inheritance. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a parent class. We're going to inherit that class from a child class and then we're going to define some custom constructors and see how they work. So in one of my previous videos I used a vehicle as a base class and let's say that our vehicle has a name. So all vehicles have names. Now we can also create a class called car and we can inherit from vehicle. Now, what you don't see defined on these classes are what are called default constructors. So what we can do is we can specify the car class and automatically we get this new constructor method. And so what this allows us to do is instantiate the class, right? We've seen that in previous videos. Now, what you don't see is the ability to specify custom constructors. So every class has what's called a default constructor and it'll simply create an instance of the class without actually doing anything behind the scenes to prepare that object for a usable state. Let's say that we wanted to make sure that our cars always have names though. So what we can do in our car child class is create a constructor called car and what you'll notice about constructors is that they don't have return types. Methods have return types. Constructors do not specify a return type because the impl implied return type of the constructor is a new instance of the class that you are invoking or that you're, you're constructing, right? So in this case, the constructor for car is always going to return a car. But by declaring a custom constructor, we can perform actions within that car class that prepare the object to be used in the rest of our code. So what we can do is create a constructor that has a single input parameter. Now what happens when we create this constructor is that the default constructor no longer exists. So what this essentially forces us to do is it forces us to pass in a name for our car. In the implementation of this constructor, we can set the car's name to the name that's passed in as a parameter. So what happens in this configuration if we were to try to call the new constructor without passing in any parameters? Well, what's going to happen is it's going to tell you that it can't find an overload or a constructor for the new method, which is our constructor, and the argument count is zero. So what we tried to do is we tried to call the constructor with no arguments. However, because we declared a constructor that has a single input argument or parameter on it, we must use that constructor. So we can pass in a name for the car such as Brielle. And as you can see, I've now successfully instantiated a new car called Brielle. Now, if you still want to support a constructor that has no arguments, and you also want to have constructors that do have input arguments, you can do that by simply declaring an overload. Now, an overload is basically a duplicate definition that has a different signature of the constructor. So we're creating a second constructor that has no arguments and we created another constructor that has one input argument. Now what you can't do is you can't have two different constructors that have the same signature. So see, when we create a second constructor that has the same input parameters or the same signature, what happens is that PowerShell ISE actually tells us that the car constructor is already defined and we can't have two of them. But what we can do is we can have multiple overloads. So we can have a default constructor, we can have a constructor that takes in the car's name, and we could also add some more properties to the car, like mileage. And in our child class, we could then implement another constructor that has even a different signature that allows us to specify not just the car's name, but we can also specify the default mileage of the car when it's constructed. 
So in this implementation, we would set the car's name, and we would also set the car's mileage to the mileage input parameter. So now I can create a new car by specifying just the name, and I can also create a new car by specifying the car's name and the mileage. So if I run this, what's going to happen is I'm going to get back two cars, and uh, as you can see I have a bug there. I should have typed mileage instead of name. So if I rerun this again, I now have created two different cars. One of them used the constructor with just the car's name. The other one used the constructor with the car's name and the mileage. Now, you might ask yourself, well, in PowerShell classes, how do I uh, call the base constructor? So let's say that we had the constructor using the car's name defined up in the vehicle base class. So now we have a constructor on the vehicle class that only accepts a single string, which is the car's name. So if we were to uh, call the car constructor and only specify the mileage, or actually, let's use this, let's use this constructor right here. So we're going to pass in the name and the mileage, just like we did down here. And in this case, rather than setting the car's name in the car child class, what we're going to do is we're going to tell this to call the constructor of the parent class. And the way that we do that is we use the base keyword, and we put a colon after the constructor of the child class. We then can specify the parameters that we want to pass in to the base uh, class's constructor. So what's essentially going to happen here is when we instantiate our car, we're going to call this constructor right here. It's going to set the mileage of the car. And then it's going to call the base constructor passing in the name. So we're still going to get the same result, as you can see right here. But we've used the base class's implementation of the constructor to define the car's name. And we've defined the mileage in the child class. One more scenario that I want to share with you is the default constructor for the base class. So if we put in some code here to say base constructor called with no parameters, um, let's actually just take that parenthesis off and say foreground color green. So now what's going to happen if we simply instantiate a car with no parameters. So let's call car new with no parameters. And if we run that, you can see that we received a car, so a car was constructed, but it doesn't have a name, it doesn't have a defined mileage, and you can see that the base constructor was called. So what happened here is that the child constructor was called directly by us, but implicitly behind the scenes, what actually happened is the base, cons the base class's uh, constructor was also called. So if we copy this line down here into the child class and say child constructor was called with no parameters, and we make that red, you can see that uh, the actually the, the base class was called first. My apologies. The base class was called first then the child constructor was called, and then finally we received a car in result. So that's just a little bit about uh, classes, inheritance, and constructors, and how to call base constructors from a child class. I hope this video is helpful, and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks!